Hey, welcome to Bay Floor Leadership with uh, myself and Dr. Eddie Sherman. Uh, we are spending some time each uh, segment of this program answering questions that are submitted by you to us for our opinions. Naturally, follow your department policies, procedures, talk to your HR folks anytime you have that kind of a question. But we hope we'll be able to give you some insight on some uh, challenging issues we're dealing with. Eddie, we got a good one today. Talk to talk to us about it. Yes, we certainly do. So the question is, what's the best way to discipline volunteers yet have a crew available if needed? Well, let's just talk for a moment about what's the difference between paid staff and volunteers. Well, the obvious difference is a paycheck. And, and that is important and that's a distinction, but in terms of morale and motivation and trust, there really should be little difference in terms of how interactions happen with those people. So yes, it is true that a paid employee comes to work because they get a paycheck, but there's also other facets of work. As we well known, lots of research studies have shown that there are people who are more interested in working in a good environment than they are strictly in the dollars that they get paid. So for those volunteers who provide their time, the question to be asked is why? Why do they do that? And so there's some reward to them which isn't monetary, which isn't financial, and it's really important to identify that so that you can provide that motivation for them. So maybe that is uh, serving their community. Maybe that is doing something that they feel meaningful by being a first responder. There's also a social aspect of that, of course, which is to be together with other people who are like-minded and have similar interests and want to do similar things. So foster those things. So this is not just about how do you discipline volunteers. This is how can you help not only attract but retain volunteers and so if you do these things i believe and you support those people and you show them and we'll talk about some specific strategies in a moment how to do that you're much more likely to be able to present them with some concerns problems issues and hold them accountable than if the only time that you talk to them is when there's a problem because paid or volunteer that's never a good strategy I, I, I've always said, I'll continue to say, and I'll, I'll believe this to the end, give me a disciplined fire company, and I'm going to show you a company people want to be involved in. Okay, and that means when you take, if you're worried about taking action on an employee, and you're worried if you get in their stuff about an issue that they're not going to come around, uh, it may be good that they don't come around, but the balance of your membership are going to see that you're taking care of business, you're doing your job as a boss. They, people want to be led, they want to be in a structured environment, they wanna be in a fair environment, and today, time is so precious that you're asking me to volunteer, make sure my time is worth it, and make sure the environment is good. So as, as far as the discipline to keep them coming along, coming around, uh, you know, I use a term that I probably shared in this program, and as well as the, um, uh, company officer's dilemma program, and it's don't force me to do my job. Don't force me into to having to correct your behavior. Don't don't mess up. Don't screw up, right? And if you do, uh, acknowledge it. Let's fix it and move on. But understand that as a lieutenant, as a captain, or as a volunteer chief, in this case, you're being watched, and 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 being watched means people are gauging how much time they're willing to give to an organization. Uh, and how they're feeling valued. And, and you may or may not like that term, and you may kind of make a joke about, oh, I'm a millennial, I need to be valued. Well, that's how it works, pal. That's the world today. And if you're not going to value their time, they're going to go someplace else. So I guess to sum up what I'm trying to say is, if you don't deal with that one particular problem properly, you may or may not lose that employee, but you've got other volunteers who are looking to see how you're going to deal with it, because that person, odds are their behavior is impacting everybody. Eddie? So we're definitely always talking about fairness, equity, uniformity. Those are things that people are always assessing. Their radar is always on about that. And that's number one, how they're treated, but how other people are treated. And that includes, are they being held to uh, answer and held accountable? 
but we know that hey the what is, let's let's just be truthful here for a moment and say almost everybody who supervises or manages people reports that one of the most difficult or unpleasant parts of doing that is holding people accountable and particularly having those difficult conversations when it's necessary to sit down with somebody and deliver some unpleasant news because something needs to change. So let me offer one idea, just one suggestion right here and now is, is a tool that you can put in your toolbox and you may already be doing this, but if not, I suggest you give this a try. You may have heard of the Oreo cookie approach. So the Oreo cookie approach when you have to sit down and have those difficult conversations is a sandwich of positivity wrapped around negativity. So what that means is when you sit down to discuss the problem with them, and this is key to a volunteer because they're gonna wanna say in that conversation, why should I come back? Why do I wanna participate? Why do I even wanna affiliate or be here? Start with a genuine, sincere, positive thing. Hopefully there's something positive they have done. They've attended training, they've participated, they've made suggestions, whatever it is, compliment them on that. Then address the issue truthfully, honestly, and directly. I'm concerned about this thing that happened. We need to turn this around. We got to make sure this doesn't happen again. And then close by saying something like, hey, we, are, we, we appreciate your time and effort. We know there's a lot of places you could be. You could be with your family. You could be doing all kinds of things, but you choose to come here to the fire station and make a contribution. And we appreciate that. If you do those things, I think that what is so unpleasant or uncomfortable may be greatly minimized because you're less likely, not with everybody, so that's an important caveat, but with most people or most healthy people to get a good and positive response. The pay to a volunteer is the environment. They're being paid by being somewhere they want to hang out, they want to be, they're with people who they enjoy being with, that's the pay. So you've got to maintain that environment. And that means if you've got a problem child, then you've got to deal with that problem child. And if that problem child doesn't come around anymore, that may be better for the organization. It depends on the situation. And I've seen, again, I'll kind of uh, uh, wrap up with what I uh, uh, started with in this discussion. The more discipline, I'm not talking about stupid discipline. I'm talking about a disciplined organization with solid traditions, solid policies, solid guidelines, solid expectations is always the better turnout, the better morale, the better organization, and ultimately the better place for you to volunteer. And the bottom line is what? The public, right? We're providing a good service to the public. So never hesitate to remember the pay they get is the environment. Eddie, you want to wrap it up? Yep, I agree completely. I mean, the question to be answered is why are they coming here? And and if you're a volunteer fire officer, why are you coming here? And what motivates you? And what? how can you apply those principles to motivate other people? Because yes, you're providing a service to the community, but it needs to be a positive environment too. And so those things can totally be accomplished. And we know there are many examples of that succeeding really well. Thanks for that, uh, th your thoughts, Eddie, and, and, and for the person who wrote in that question. Uh, uh, arguably, the most challenging job in the fire service is a volunteer fire officer because you don't have that, uh, that pay incentive. Uh, they don't have to come if they don't want to. There's no obligation. So you got your hands full. But if you apply some of the stuff we talked about today, maybe it'll be, make your life a little bit easier in dealing with those issues. So if you have any questions for us, you can send them into webinars at lexapol.com, subject line Bay Floor Leadership. And uh, Eddie and I, Dr. Ed Sherman uh, and myself, will do our best to provide you with what our thoughts are. And then you can apply that to what you think is going to work out best. Any final thoughts? Yep. As, in, engage with people, communicate with people, support people, find out what's going on, but still deal with problems when they arise. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for joining us.